Hey everyone, so today I'm going to continue talking about the $300,000 system. Now for those who have not seen the first video, please check it out first and I will have the link up here. Now once again, the equipment I'm going to talk about today are very expensive. So if high-end audio gear offend you, please go check out my other video as opposed to watching this video to the end and leaving unproductive comments for my friend. Now, I will touch on the $43,000 Esoteric Grandioso K1 CD-ROM and the $70,000 Rido D3 speakers in this video. So, the Grandioso uh, K1, uh, it, us it uses the new uh, AKM4497 chip, which is, usually, which is just actually a 32-bit DAC. Now, however, for each channel, it has four DACs. So this use of multiple DAC and through algorithm magic, it converts the PCM signal at 35-bit resolution. Now, on paper, think about that. That's 2,000 times the resolution of a 24-bit 24, 24 processing. Now, for me, I never really care about 24-bit or 32-bit because I've heard 24-bit DAC that can outperform 32-bit DACs. I believe the output stage design as well as how the power supplies design is more important. Now, well, this K1 has four toroidos, tor toroid, toroidos, oh gosh, I can't pronounce it, transformers. And although I don't know anything about power supply design, in my book, the more heavy the thing is, the more wow it is. Now, this CD-ROM is over 70 pounds, guys. That passes my, the more heavy, the more awesome it is, Thomas criteria. So how do you describe 35-bit uh, high-end CD-ROM sound? Um, I can say that in general, high-end CD-ROM, the liquidity, the fluidity of the sound is what sets it apart. Now, I would not say it sounds as analog as vinyl, and it's not meant to be. When I first heard it, I can tell right away the difference between this and his older 32-bit esoteric K01 CD-ROM. So this new one is the esoteric Grandioso K1, and his last CD-ROM was the $28,000 esoteric K01. So one is K1, one is K01. Now the soundstage and the sweet spot increase significantly, so much so that I can pass a blind test 100% of the time. It's like I have stepped into a concert hall instead of a regular room. Now also, it level up in terms of holographic image. And now for those who can afford this K1, now before you go run out and buy it blind, you, you might want to audition it first. You see, remember I said the soundstage is bigger? Well, the problem is the singer physical size increased too. It's like the singer got fat and tripled in size. Now, eventually my friend towed in the speaker a bit more and that solved the problem. However, I feel the bass is still a bit too grand and not as focused as before. So, now my friend likes it that way because the bass feels more effortless. It's really come down to a question of taste. Uh, the other part that new K1 CD-ROM does better is when it uses it, when my friend uses it as a DAC to play files, uh, music files from the computer. Now the gap between CD rip and CD uh, actual CD is almost non-existent. With the older K01, yeah, I, can, I can hear a difference. So I'm gonna touch on the sound of the system a bit more when I talk about the speaker. Now I remember I used to have these uh, PSB beta series speaker. Uh, it was a home theater setup, it's like five speakers, and I was so proud of them. Uh, I would invite my friends over to show off what DTS uh, HD concert sounded like. I remember now that uh, my friends, in an effort to remain polite, would never comment on it, like how it sounds, but rather they would give me hints like, you know, maybe you should remove the grill. Maybe you should move the speakers around to get more clarity. Now for me at the time, I don't understand why they were not blown away by my home theater until the day I heard this system. Now, I felt like I was the, the, the frog living in a well. You know the story about this frog living inside a well, and when he looks up, that is the only sky he sees, and he never knew how big the sky really was. Well, the first time I heard this uh, system, yeah, granted, at the time it was about 150,000, I was blown away. It's like you watch a 17-inch old CRT black and white TV all your life, and someone shows you an OLED 100-inch 4K TV. Now, if you're an audiophile, who has a lot of experience, then it's like somebody showing you 300-inch 8K TV with 8K content. That was how it felt for me. And I remember even my brother who only listened on his iPhone was shocked at how the song uh, Style from Taylor Swift sounded. I remember him saying, I never knew this song can sound like this. 
So the Rhino D3 speaker. So why is it so expensive? Is it made of gold, perhaps diamond? Well, in this case, it is made of diamond. Now we hear about diamond tweeters all the time, but not often do we hear about diamond woofers. Now each woofer here is coated with one carat of diamond. Now, can you imagine how fast and tight the base on these speakers are? You are now talking about the hardest substance on earth. Now, I remember Paul McGowan, he's the CEO of PS Audio. Uh, in one of his videos, he, he once said, on paper, your speaker might go down to 30 hertz, but good luck getting 30 hertz where you're sitting. Now, I have owned many speakers that can go down to 30 hertz on paper. My forever speaker is the Earthquake Titan Tigris, and it's rated at 25 hertz. And then I can tell you now that none of the 30 speakers, 30, 30 speakers I have owned and the countless speakers I've heard, even the high-end expensive one, can go as low as these Rido D3. No speaker are more punchy as, as these, none are as fast as this, and none have as much definition as this. Some would argue that you know, an 18 18-inch woofer can go lower and more punchy. Well, first of all, too much bass is not necessarily a good thing. Good luck in trying to hear all the nuances when the woofer overpowers and takes center stage. Second, even if it's true that you can go lower than these speakers, you cannot. There's no way you can keep up with the speed and definition of these speakers. People I meet usually have multiple sets of speakers because you now some speakers are good for jazz while others are good for rock. Uh, some are good for classical music and so forth. And it's hard to find a speaker that's good for everything. Well, these speakers are good for everything. Now, as I mentioned in the past, ultra high-end speakers can go extreme on both ends. These speakers are silky smooth and at the same time razor sharp. It's like playing uh, both uh, Foco speakers and Harbef at the same time, but minus the weakness from both speakers. That's, that's why it is such an experience with these speakers. You want to hear the, the, the breathing of the singer so she can convey her emotions, moving you to tears? and at the same time can hear the powerful bass clearly, no problem, these can do it. You want to hear all the instruments distinctively with a big soundstage, this system does it in spades. Well, how can you not? At this price, uh, it should serve you coffee on top of that. Now, one thing I want to add, the ceiling in this room are acoustic tile that absorbs sound, and uh, combined with the thickest carpet you can get, once you close the door, you can hear the noise level drop significantly. Now he uses curtain on both sides to deal with the first point of reflection, and I, I actually copied him. Sure, you can use deficient panels for better results. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So as I mentioned in the other video, nothing I say would justify the system. However, let me give you a different perspective on is it worth it? Now before he got this Rido D3, he had the BMW 803D. It sounded amazing. And whoever say AO3D diamond tweeters are too edgy, I guarantee you on this system, it's 0% edgy, 0% harsh. Although it was good, I always felt something was missing. I say that because I got a chance to hear many systems and I've come to, to know what I like and as good as the AO3D sounded, it was not perfect. So when he got the Rido D3, right away, I can tell it was perfect. Perfect. Now, at this price point, I think it's a pursuit of perfection. Now, um, part of my work has to do with quality control and customer service, my actual work. So, your IO score is 0% or 100% with the customer. There is no such thing as almost great. For me, yes, the Rido is maybe five times the price of the AO3D. And for me to ask, is the base five times better? Does it resolve five times better? And so forth is the wrong question. Is it worth five times the price for you to achieve perfection? For me, it is. For some people, maybe one time more to achieve their perfect, while others take ten times more. As I said, nothing I can say can, can justify that for us normal people, and I'm just trying to make sense of it. So I'm going to wrap it up. The opportunity to hear this system is both a blessing and a curse. A curse because every time I'm, when I'm happy with my own system, I come over here to listen to this and I go home and end up selling my whole system wanting to upgrade. So because of this, in the past two years, I've gone over 30 preamps, 30 amps, 30 pairs of speakers. And eventually, to be honest, recently I gave up. And now I've come to accept that you know all these 
system that I'm building, which are between thirty thousand to fifty thousand. What well, some system I hear are in the fifty thousand zone. These thirty thousand dollar systems simply cannot come close. So that's why I finally give up and I settle for a final system myself, which I'll make a video one day. Uh, I say that, I say that, yeah, but I, I'm still quote unquote trying, uh, but I have slowed down. I say that I stopped, but I'm still trying, but I've slowed down a lot because uh, it's, it's, it's something that I have to accept. And the nail in the coffin for me is that the next day I finished making this video, I got a chance to listen to a system with full PS audio setup with their top of the line BHKM preamp, Joseph audio speakers, twin subwoofer, and it does not come close. That setup was already way better than my own, and it there was still a big gap. So also, uh, now as I mentioned in my other video, my friend who owns the twelve thousand dollar Focal Canter, and if you look at his amp preamp starting ad together, it's still at the price of when it was new, maybe thirty thousand, and. He got a chance to hear my other friend, $60,000 Pierre Gabriel Grandmaster speaker. My Focal Cantor friend lost interest in his own speaker after hearing that $60,000 speaker. So guys, my advice is unless you want to go down that never ending path of system upgrade, you might want to think twice before you want to audition a high end system. So now the music clip. Now I recorded 20 tracks and maybe three are usable. Why? It's because I record this system with my usual settings that I've done with so many other video. And the problem is the bass. Once the bass kicks in, my, mic my microphone settings, uh, because of the way it's set, cannot keep up. I even took the time to record uh, from an XRCD and a SACD to show you the difference, and they're all useless. And I'll play a clip to show you what I mean in the music clip. Now, if you listen to the problem clip, you see that the vocals and the top end has normal volume. But when the bass kicks in, it distorts the whole recording. Now, fortunately, I did record a few clips with my settings significantly toned down than my usual. But those are not mainstream songs. Regardless, you know, I'm, I'm going to put up the music clip and uh, check it out. Uh, I love hearing comments from you. And uh, it will help spread this video if you give it a like. Uh, so, uh, till next time. Okay, bye.